Hi everybody, I am Bianca Octavia here with Plaid Crafts today to show you how to upcycle an old paint can and turn it into a storage for your craft supplies. And we are going to do this with some of our color ship paints as well as glitterific. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I, for my project, I'm going to use the Viol Violet Flash Blue Violet Brilliant. So we're going to start with this. And like I said, we are going to upcycle this paint can. So the first thing we're going to do to do that is to paint it. So I'm going to start with the Blue Violet Flash. And I'm just going to put a little bit of it on our paint can. You don't want to do too much at one time. Just enough to get our first layer going. I, for this project, <clears throat> I would suggest using a sponge brush. I found that to be a lot easier at home when I did it with this. And the strokes are just a lot smoother and a lot cleaner. And the cool thing about this paint is it's multicolored. So as it hits the light in different angles and different ways, you can kind of see that it's blue, violet, and gold. And I picked this one because I really liked how that gold popped through. I feel like gold always makes anything look a little expensive, a little more expensive. So I think this is a good first coat for this side. Again, you don't want to do too much. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and start on the next side. I'm not going to set it down all the way because we don't want to mess it up. So we'll add a little bit more here. There we go. It's so pretty. It looks like melted candy to me. All right. So we'll just add another layer onto the other side of our paint can. And in between your coats, I would probably give it about 15, 20 minutes before you go back in and add the next coat of paint. At home, I noticed that when I did it too soon, it kind of got clumpy. So let it dry just a little bit before you go back in with that second coat. You probably are going to have to do four coats for full coverage. That's what it took for me at home. About three to four coats. But we actually got this pretty covered with our first one. So let's see. Let's see. We'll get right up in here. So this part right around here where the handle is, this is kind of where I went in with my smaller brush. So I switch over to that one so we can get around the edges really good. And if you want to, if it's easier for you, you can detach your handle off of your can. I didn't. I just left it on there. So let's switch over to the smaller brush. And let's just kind of go in right there on our handle part, the part that holds our handle. All right, there we go. Just like that. I'll spread that out. I might need it a little bit too much. All right, there we go. So yeah, I'm always looking for ways to save money and to upcycle things around my house. I love upcycling. I love giving old things new life. So that's why I picked out this project. Um, the cool thing with this is if you don't want it to be like a bucket for your craft supplies, this could also double as a champagne bucket. If you leave the top on and you get like a really, really, really cute doorknob or a crystal knob and glue it to the top of that bucket, the bucket top, it instantly turns into a champagne bucket. So let's hit this side one more time. All right, there we go. We'll get this covered. We'll go back around the handle again. All right. There we go. Flip this out of our way. Bring it back down. Yeah, that gold looks really, really pretty. I really love the emerald green as well. I love how rich it is. I feel like that really looks expensive as well. And for this design, I'm actually going to show you how to do a painted cheetah print. So our spots are going to be green and pink. So you'll get to see how pretty that emerald green is. Okay, 
So I know this looks a little crazy right now, but I promise when it dries, it looks really, really pretty. You're probably gonna have to go back over it, like I said, with three more coats just to get some full coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side. We're not gonna finish this one. I actually have one that's already fully painted and dried so that you don't have to sit here and watch me do this for about 20 minutes. So this is our first coat. And we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. And with the help of some TP magic, here is our painted bucket. Oh, still have craft supplies inside of it. <laughs> okay, so this is the front of our bucket. I've actually gone ahead and painted the other side, but I'm gonna do this side with you guys here. So let's get started. So this is the fun part. We are going to do cheetah print. I actually just learned how to do this. So um, we're kind of learning together. This was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. So I want my cheetah spots to be green. So let's go ahead and put some paint in the dish right here. And for the spots, if you have a circular sponge brush at home, I would suggest using that. It makes it a lot easier to make your spots versus trying to use like a flat brush and then trying to create perfect circles. Just grab this, it's a lot easier. So, okay. As crafty as I am, I am a horrible drawer. I cannot draw well at all. Um, and that's actually why I like doing this pattern because it's supposed to be imperfect. So, we'll start with our first spot. Grab your rounded brush at your first cheetah dot. All right, so that's one. We'll add them randomly all over. And even though we are using a rounded brush, you can make irregular shapes with your brush. So let's do a weird shaped one right there. Okay. We'll do another weird shape right here, one that doesn't really make sense. And you'll see how it'll come together in the end. And with this print, you do want to try to make sure that they are evenly spaced out. In the end, if you feel like your pattern is a little bit not patterned or a little too spaced out, you can kind of go back in and add in more spots. But when you start off, you do want them to be evenly spaced. So I feel like that's a good starting point. I'll actually add one here because I like the idea of the print kind of like coming from the bottom of the bucket as well, and maybe even the top. Let's see, this is a good spot right here. Okay, so those are, are our spots. And then we're gonna go around them with some black paint. Well, this is not black, this is actually called, well no, Black Flash Noir Brilliant, so it is black. And I picked this one out because it also has gold in it as well. I really like that. And also because cheetah print should really be outlined in black, but in art, you can do whatever you want. Art is what you make it. So now we are going to do the outline. This part is really fun as well. Let's see. Okay, so with this, and you'll see what I mean by the different examples when I go through each spot, you can do parentheses, you can do C's, and you can do full circles. So let's start off with, let's start off with a full circle. So we'll start with this one. And like I said, this does not have to be perfect. You kind of want it to be imperfect. So you just kind of want to go all the way around it. Do not try to make straight lines. If you try to make it too perfect, it's not going to look right. It's going to look too perfect. It's going to look weird. So this is a complete circle. All right, and then I'll show you what I mean by a C. So let's do a C around this dot right here. So a C is just basically a semicircle. So we're not gonna go all the way around our dot. We're gonna do just enough. We're gonna go halfway. All right, just like that. And if you notice, I'm kind of tapping is because like I said, I don't want to be perfect and go in one stroke. I kind of want it to be a little bit feathered. So there we go. That's our second dot. 
let's move on to let's see let's do this one right here so this one is the parentheses and so basically what that is you're doing two C's on both sides of your dot so it's not half and it's also not fully circled so there we go so those are, are our different outlines so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off the rest now the weird shapes I don't have a name for those <laughs> I don't really have anything to call these outlines but you just kind of want to go along the shape of whatever it is kind of like that but I will fully enclose this one so it's coming together it might look a little weird right now but once we finish and we go in and we add little details and some more tiny dots it starts to come together as a full pattern this is really fun to like watch a show and zone out to there we go so i think i'm gonna try some different projects with this print at home okay so let's do another weird shaped one right here And then when we finish with this, I think I'm going to go through and add in some accents of pink. I love pink. I feel like it makes any project pop. And so I'll just go around my outlines again with small pops of pink just to make it a little more interesting. And then on top of my dots, once this is fully dried, just to add some texture and a little bit of glam, I'm going to add some glitterific to my spot. Okay, so see, this is really easy, really quick, actually. And you don't have to know how to draw, because I definitely do not. All right. This almost looks like an 80s print, like something from the 80s, really retro. All right. Okay, okay, we got three more over here. Okay. Do you have anybody watching? We do. Uh, we do. If you want to run through the colors you're using one more time. Sure, the colors the new that people. I'm using. Okay. Yep. So the colors that I'm using are blue violet flash. That is the base color that we have here. And then for the dots, I am using emerald flash. I really, really, really like this color. And I usually never use green in my crafts. Um, but I feel like this looks really, really rich. I really love this. And then I'm also using the Black Flash Noir Brilliant. So this one is really cool because even though it's black, when you kind of twist it and turn it, it flashes gold. That's really, really nice. And then in the end, we'll see how I feel, but I think I do want to add in a little bit of the Pink Flash Rose Brilliant. So those are the colors that we are using for this project. But at home, get creative as you would like. Um, switch it up with different colors. Uh, right before we end, I'll show you the other bucket that I made uh, with a different color scheme. Same pattern, different color scheme. And also, if you're just joining again, I said earlier that this would be a really cool craft um, to make a champagne bucket out of. So it doesn't have to be a craft supply, supply bucket. You can get even more creative. And again, I said earlier, you could add like a doorknob to the top of the top of the bucket hot glue it on and you can lift it up put it down and you have a entire champagne bucket one of the viewers said it would also be good for putting gifts inside yeah i think this would be a really nice easter basket with easter coming up i saw i saw that i did with some really cute bows on the side of it i think that would be really really cute okay so see it's coming together guys so you want to start with just a few i do not suggest with going in uh with a bunch of dots when you start out so now that we have our main dots, let me switch over to a smaller circular sponge brush. I feel like these have an actual name. I don't know. Does anybody? Spouncer. Spouncer. Okay. There we go. Spouncer. I knew it had a name. So while you're getting that color, um, someone was asking if it's a multi-surface paint. And yes, Folk Art Color Shift is multi-surface. Yep. Um, so it is multi-surface. And for those of you asking about the colors, 
Uh, if you check out the link in the description, it will take you to a set that has six colors in it. And these are the colors that she's using in her project. Yeah, I'm excited to try this, this paint on a bunch of different other things. I really, 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 really like how it looks kind of metallic and flashes and shines. Okay. So I switched over to the smaller bouncer and I'm adding in smaller dots randomly throughout. Again, you do kind of want them to be evenly spaced. You don't want to overcrowd the bucket or the pattern because then it'll kind of start to look messy. Um, let's add one right up here and then let's see I feel like I'm gonna stop right here let's go ahead and outline these and then we'll see how we feel about the pattern if it needs more dots in the end if it doesn't then what you do to kind of complete the entire pattern and to pull it together you go around into the empty spots and you just add completely black spots so no more green dots, we're just gonna do tiny black specks randomly throughout to pull our pattern all the way together. And again, if you weren't here earlier or you didn't hear me say it, you don't want this to be perfect. You don't want your strokes to be perfect. So I'm tapping my brush. I'm not going like this, I'm going like this. There we go. And then, the ones that are not fully rounded or outlined in black, black are called our C's. This right here is called a parentheses because we're doing one outline on each side. We're not fully enclosing it. And then the full circles are the one that are are the ones that are fully outlined. So and this is really quick. I'm trying to think of something else that I want to put a cheetah print on now. All right. And I tried to wear something that matched my bucket. I forgot I had this outfit. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it or if you saw it earlier. But this bucket will also be cute and just plain on polka dots. But I wanted to play with cheetah print. Okay. Oh, we have one right here. There we go. Let's do this one in a half a happy a C okay let's see do I feel like we should add more let's add a few more green dots and then I think we will move on to our fully black dots so I definitely feel like we should fill in this space right here that looks a little empty let's see let's put one right here Let's put another one right here. And then let's maybe even put, oops, that's black. Let's maybe even put one right here. So actually we were talking about turning these into gift baskets. Even with this design on it, I think that would be a really cool, um, a really cool Easter basket design. Uh, one right here. Let's see. So this year for Easter, I'm going to make everyone adult Easter baskets. And I'm trying to think of really cool ways to gift an adult Easter basket. It will not be a basket. It will be something very <laughs> non-traditional. So it might be these buckets. And maybe there'll be Easter basket champagne buckets with champagne bottles in them when I give them <laughs> to people. Um, okay. Maybe, maybe one right here too. Okay. All right. One more round of our outlines and then I think we are done. Let's see. Has anyone ever used this paint before? Or is this your first time seeing it? Well, one of our viewers has some, but she hasn't thought of a project to use for it yet. Thought of a project to use for it. So she says this looks like fun. Yeah, this is really, really fun. I can't wait to try it out on some more things. Another idea I had to make was to um, make a plant planter out of it um, by maybe 
gluing a bowl on top of a candle holder and painting the base of it with this paint. Haven't tried it yet, but it was an idea. There we go. Okay. And we have someone who's already excited about the glitter. Oh, the glitter? Yeah. Okay. She so said now, everything's better with glitter. <laughs> We're just going to go through and accent the dots with the glitter. Oh, we got two more. Yeah, I'm excited about the glitter as well. Okay. Oh, I missed this one. I think that's the second to the last one. Okay, let's fully enclose this one. Okay. All right, last one. I don't know why, but this is making me think of, um, there was a show I really used to like. I cannot remember the name of it. It's going to come to me. Okay. So that is, well, these are, are our main dots. So now I'm going to go in with just the black dots, like I said earlier. For this you do want to use a regular paintbrush. I'm gonna use a really tiny one here. And then, just like I said earlier, you do not want it to be perfect. I'm just gonna add in random black spots, guys. They don't even have to have a real shape. You just want it to be really, really random. And don't even think about it. Just do something, just, that's it. Okay. And even with these, you want these to be evenly spaced out. You don't want to put your black dots too close together. You want it to look really random because that's what patterns are. Okay. Let's see. All right. We'll put one up here. And if you feel like you messed up at home, the thing that I really like about this paint is that it's really forgiving. Like when I felt like I messed up my pattern, I just got a warm cloth or even um, a cold damp cloth and I was just able to easily wipe it off. So that's what I really, really, really like about this paint. Okay, let's see. Any more open spots we wanna fill? I don't wanna put our dots too close together. Okay. Okay. I see about two more spots I kind of want to fill in. Maybe right here. And then maybe even right here. And then I will flip this over and we will see what we have. Oh, no, I have to add the, um, the glitterific and the pink spots. Okay. So I think I'm going to leave it at this. I think I'm satisfied with this. Let's see. Maybe even one here. Okay, so once you finish that part, you kind of want to let this dry for a second. So I will just sit this right here for a second and I will get I will get our pink paint prepped. So again, I am using the pink flash rose brilliant. And I'm just gonna go through and add tiny pops of pink throughout. Not too much. Let's see, let's just swipe this off just a little bit. I am a messy crafter. Okay, so we'll add just a little bit right here. And then we'll grab another paintbrush, another small, small paintbrush, and then lightly dip it in your paint. Do not overload your paintbrush, just a little bit. So we'll bring this back over. This dries really, really quick. And if you are in a rush or in a pinch, just grab a blow dryer and you can get it dry even faster. So let's see, let's go with one of our dots that is basically almost done drying. So let's start with this one. And I'm just gonna do this randomly throughout as well. I'm not picking any specific ones. I'm just randomly going throughout, let's see. My hands are a little shaky. Okay. And so the other side of this bucket is actually already dried. So if this is not fully done drying by the time 
I finish, I will just flip this over and show you what the other side looks like. All right. So I'm going on the inside of the black. In, yep, inside of the circle, semicircle. Okay. So let's see. Let's pick another random one. We'll go along this weird shaped one right here. And what I chose to do, I'm not even going of, along the entire outline. I'm just doing small parts of it. Okay. Let's pick another random one. Let's see, this one up here. There we go. Is anybody watching not from Georgia? I always like to know where everybody is from. And if your weather is better where you are, because it's really weird. <laughs> It was summer one day and then it was snowing the next day. I was really confused. Okay. We did have somebody say they liked the planter idea. Yeah, I think that would be really, really cute. I am not a green thumb person. All of my plants actually die, but it's something that I'm trying to get better at. And I was thinking that maybe some really cute and cool planters would encourage me. We have a Washington State chiming in. That's pretty far. Washington State, that Washington is State. very far. It's far bet, from Georgia. I bet it's kind of cold. Well, no. It's, it might be kind of warm there right now. I've never been to Washington State. I'm actually from Washington, D.C., but I've never been to Washington State. I know those are two very different things, but <laughs> okay. Let's choose a few more to outline. I'm not doing all of these. I just wanted, um, you know, some random pink throughout. It is a requirement in my home that everything have some type of splash of pink. So <laughs> I had to throw pink in here somewhere. Okay, there we go. And then after this, we will go in and add in our tiny pops of glitterific. And just like the pink, I'm just gonna randomly go through my spots and kind of hit them with the glitter. I'm not gonna do all of them. Um, the glitter also adds texture, and I really liked that. Okay, let's see, let's maybe do this one. When this dries, it'll look a lot brighter. But right now, they're still kind of wet. Okay. This one, this one. I'm not satisfied with that. Two more, two more, two more. <laughs> they're talking about the weather now in the comments, saying that they're having opposite weather of us. Oh, does that mean your weather is good? They had, they had cold rain, snow, then gorgeous, then cold wind and yeah, snow. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. Even today, we had crazy cold yeah. fog, and now it's beautiful. Yeah, it's. And then it was a hurricane for the last three days. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> and now it's just a beautiful day. Okay. So I think I'm going to stop there. And then I'm going to set this off to the side. And we're just going to go in with some glitterific. Let's see. Let's use, we'll use this brush here. So for my project, there are a bunch that you can choose from. But... I picked out the one that I felt matched the colors that I was using, and that was um, Princess. So I am using Princess. Kind of hard to read through the glitter. So let's pop this open, and we will just go through and add in some random spots. I just dip my brush in here. So I got rid of the tops for my bucket because I don't want the hassle of opening and closing them. I just want to be able to reach in them each time. But if you are going to keep your bucket, what I thought was really cool, and which I actually did try out at home, is just like I said, I decided not to keep my buckets. I, there we go, get a little bit of, bit of that out. I painted the entire top with the glitterific and it was really cool. It almost looked like resin. 
um, because it was, it looked like gloss on top. It almost looked like glass with that thick layer of the glitter effect. Okay, so we're gonna randomly go throughout and add in, let's see, let's find one that's really dry and randomly add in some glitter on the spots. So while you're adding your glitter, Jackie's asking, how did you come up with the design with color shift in mind? And she finds that hard to do. Mmm, you know, I kind of agree with that because this is a very specific type of paint. Um, I have really been into patterns lately, specifically animal print for some reason. And when I saw this paint, it Im immediately made me think of glam. And when I think of glam, I think of um, really rich animal prints like zebra, cheetah, tiger stripes, like, you know, the big, beautiful rugs that they have. I was like, this would be so pretty in a woman's den um, if it had like the flashing colors with the animal print. So that is kind of how I came up with this project. And something else that I thought about was to... Um, fully have a cheetah on here. I cannot draw at all. But what you can do is print out um, a cheetah pattern and you can cut out your um, cut out your cheetahs and then you want to use a glue adhesive, maybe even some Mod Podge and glue them onto your bucket in a pattern. I think that would be really cute as well. Wouldn't involve as much paint, but um, I thought that would be really nice too. That is an idea that kind of crossed my mind. Okay. So, like I said, we're just kind of randomly going throughout. I'm not going to do too much. Um, let's see. Here is another one. So maybe I'll practice tiger stripes next. Maybe that's something I'll work on in the next few weeks. There we go, just a little bit. Just a little bit, not a lot. Randomly throughout, nothing here is perfect. All right. And we are coming to the end here, guys. This is really quick, really fun. And again, like we said, you can turn this into a gift basket, champagne bucket, craft supply bucket, and honestly, I even thought about using these as kitchen canisters to like hold utensils. Um, I don't know if you want to go that far as to put food in it, but if you did, you could keep your food maybe bagged up, like keep your flour in the bag and maybe um, put your flour bags inside of these, especially if you keep the tops and do a different design, of course, unless you want cheetah print canisters in your kitchen. <laughs> But I think that would be really, really good, cool. Um, my kitchen is kind of farmhousey, so if it were me, I would paint them in the in the color shift that is the lightest color. I can't see. I think that this one is it. It's this one right here. And I think this is called yep white flash. So if it were me, I would use the white flash, and then I would let it dry, and then I would probably get some stencils that say whatever food it is that I'm using or put it into my canister. And then I would probably stencil that with some other paint here. I would probably use the black flash. And I think that would look really, really cute. So I'd probably put coffee, flour, sugar, cookies, and just like the champagne bucket so that you can open and close it easily. I would probably hot glue a doorknob to the top of it and paint the doorknob too, to make it really, really cute. So having guys, a, they're having a great discussion on <laughs> ideas on how to use color shift. Really? I would love yeah. to hear it. Let me hear it. Let's see. They're talking about testing swatches um, in sketchbooks to see how the colors go. They've used them for rock painting. Ooh, rock yeah. painting would be really, really, really cute. Let's see. A few more spots, guys, and I think we are done. Yes, share your ideas with me. I would love to hear them. Give me some inspiration. I could definitely see these on rocks. These paints on rocks. That would be really, really cute. Okay. All right, 
right, guys, I think I'm going to stop here because I did just want them to be random. I didn't want them all throughout the bucket, but I kind of got a little carried away, but that's okay. Okay. You can't have too much glitter. It's fine. <laughs> okay, guys, so I think I'm going to stop here. This is our bucket. I'll flip it around so that you can see the other side. This side, I did not do the glitter on. Just kind of wanted you to see the difference. Glitter, no glitter. And then when you are done, you stuff it with your craft supplies. So I'll bring this one over. I really love this one. Um, I love how this looks in my office at home. So this is the, let's see. Same colors again. I just used emerald green as my base color. And then again, just so you can have the names of everything, I used the Pink Flash Rose Brilliant. And then for the outline for this, I used again, the Black Flash. So those are all of the paints that we used today. I had a lot of fun doing this with you guys. If you have any questions before we log out, let me know. And find me on social media at I am Bianca Octavia. I would love to see what you guys, what you guys come up with at home. I don't have all the ideas in the world. I love getting inspiration from other people. So please find me, and I look forward to crafting with you guys again on the next craft break. Thank you, guys.